was the United States involved in a huge cover-up of nuclear testing on behalf of Israel? Or is this all just some conspiracy? Let's discuss. It was September 1979 and Jimmy Carter was the President of the United States of America and would soon be up for re-election once again, running a campaign heavily based on not spreading nuclear bombs or materials or information to non-nuclear states along with disarmament. The SALT II Treaty had only been signed two months prior, which is a treaty over arms control. So any incident involving nuclear weapons or our allies, especially with our allies, would not be a good thing for Carter or his re-election. Not to mention it could pose a threat to the treaty. Then on September 22nd, 1979, the Villa Hotel satellite, which was labeled as retired, but still very much worked, picked up a double flash. First, an initial brief flash, then a second, longer flash, which only happens if nuclear materials are involved in an explosion. And this was not the first time that this satellite had picked up something of this nature. It had picked up the double flash at least 44 times in its history. And each and every time it was due to a nuclear explosion. And these double flashes took place in one of the most remote areas of the world. In the Indian Ocean, near Prince Charles Island, owned by France, and... Crozet Island, owned by South Africa. The U.S. immediately opened up a investigation, sending 25 Air Force shorties over that airspace to do atmospheric sampling. Study of wind patterns confirmed that the winds could carry the fallout to southwestern Australia. And later it was confirmed that low levels of iodine-131, a product of nuclear fusion, was found in sheep in Australia and Tasmania shortly after the event. Then on that same day of September 22nd, Puerto Rico had actually detected a, an anomalous ionospheric wave during that morning, during that time, which moved from southeast to northeast, an event that had not been observed previously. Now, at first, after this was made public, the Department of Defense clarified that this was either a bomb blast or a combination of natural phenomenon, such as lightning, a meteor, uh, a glint from the sun? Yeah. Ugh. And the American intelligence agencies actually said that they had high confidence that this was a nuclear bomb, although no nuclear or radioactive debris had been found. Yet later on, an NSC report revised just, just all of that and said that their findings were inconclusive but that if illegal nuclear testing had taken place, it was probably by the Republic of South America, or the Republic of South Africa. Even though all of South Africa's nuclear bombs, which were like, I believe seven of them, they were all accounted for. 
See, Carter's science advisor had put together a panel of scientists to study this. And the panel came to the conclusion that even though they couldn't rule out nuclear explosion, they thought that it was something called a zoo event. And a zoo event is basically a false reading. They believe that some sort of miniature asteroid might have hit the satellite, causing a flash that looked like a nuclear bomb explosion. Yet, Viktor Galinsky, a former member of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, argued this, saying that their findings were politically motivated. Their study totally ignored the findings in Puerto Rico and Australia, which both showed evidence of some sort of nuclear activity. Also, the Los Alamos... National Laboratory scientists who worked on the Villa Hotel program who actually worked on that satellite they had confirmed that the satellite was in perfect working order basically they felt that this was a true flash okay see it was thought that whoever had done this they wanted to keep it a secret since at the time this satellite was labeled as retired. So any foreign nationalities would not have known it was still turned on. And at the time that this happened, there was no unretired, you know, current satellite scheduled to be looking at that area. And this also happened w with a typhoon in the area. So the perpetrators thought that they could hide away from the satellites and under the guise of a typhoon. And as time has gone by and documents have been declassified, Jimmy Carter's even alluded to it in his uh, now published diary, it has been made very clear that this was a conjunction between Israel and Africa, South Africa. It was mostly Israel with the aid of South Af Africa. They actually believe it was over some sort of deal to trade nuclear materials that they ended up helping each other. And that Jimmy Carter covered this up in order to keep relations, good relations intact with both Israel and South Africa plus his own political platform and re-election. It is believed that Israel was actually testing out neutron bombs, which ended up being mass-produced by them by 1984, and if not for that satellite, would have gone completely undetected. Okay, now, in February of 1994, there was a convicted spy of the Soviets that had been the commander of South Africa's Simmonstown Naval Base way back then. And he ended up talking about the incident upon his release from prison, claiming that he had nothing to do with the incident, but that he had gotten information, unofficially, but he had gotten information that this had taken place between Israel and South Africa. And that it was done underneath the code name of Operation Phoenix. In 2003, a director of the CIA at the time of Carter's administration ended up writing a book and stating in the book that this incident was a man made phenomenon. And as I said, even Jimmy Carter's book at least alluded to it in just a couple of passages that he thought that this is what was going on. And ever since then, this has kind of been a topic of fascination for several scientists and such, literally all the way up till now. And the more this is investigated and the more testings that are done, it always comes back to this had to be Israel. This had to be uh, 
is South Africa. And honestly, there is so much to the documentation because, you know, there always is with government documentation that I could spread this out over several videos. But with each and everything, it always ends up boiling down to, yes, this was a very real event. It happened. And that South Africa and Israel were the culprits and that the bombs belonged to Israel and South Africa gave them a hand in doing the testing. Documents from this, government documents from this has been declassified if any of you would like to look further into this. But for now, I would like to know what you think about this peculiar occurrence down below. Have you ever heard of the Villa incident, which is what it's been dubbed? And if so, do you believe this was actually a nuclear bomb and that Israel and South Africa were behind it? Do you believe it's just all one big conspiracy theory? Let me know down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like, share this out to all your peculiar friends. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that little red subscribe button along with that bell to all notifications so you always know when I upload. And until next time, keep your eyes filled for all things peculiar. Do 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 do